Welcome to Animator Reviews. I'm Rayan, and today I'm going to talk about the Evil Dead remake. I think it's from 2013. So, in the Farsighted, they are doing a series right now, 20 for 20, and they asked that we pick a few of our favorite movies from the year 2000 to the year 2020. And this movie came to mind almost immediately just because I am so non receptive of remakes typically. But I thought that they did a really good job with this. So this is one of my picks. Uh, they definitely... So they kept a lot of aspects of the original movie. However, none of it is that remake-y feel. It's more like a reboot because it does have the typ typical premise of the original go to a cabin, summon ancient demons, things go crazy. However, the movie opens up with... Uh, group of friends getting together to help Mia kick her dope habit and what they think is her detoxing and just being angry at them for keeping her there is really not what it seems because they did find the Necronomicon in the basement of the cabin, spoke the words as you do, and um, unleashed a horrible demon into her and they don't really get it at first until they're like, whoa, whoa, there's a lot of supernatural things going on and uh, we're kind of screwed, guys. So I'm going to leave it off here as it is spoiler free. I did like that, you know, they they had that. It, it's not that I liked it. I liked that they used her, you know, burgeoning sobriety as kind of like, is this really happening? Isn't it really happening? Whereas the audience, you know what's happening. You saw the horrible part in the forest, uh, very reminiscent of the first Evil Dead. We all know that scene with the trees. Not going to go too far into that. It's gross. But uh, that they used, you know, more modernized themes to reboot the movie with. So you weren't bored. So you weren't watching a shot for shot remake. I liked that there was a bit of a backstory to David and Mia, who are brother and sister, involving their parents, maybe explaining why Mia ended up the way she did and why David ended up a bit more successful and sober. You know, she was around when her mother was very sick. She took care of her. She saw her to the bitter end. I assume that there was some kind of dementia or some horrible disease like that where their mom at the end didn't really know who Mia was and kept referring to her as David and she just kind of went with it because you, you don't want to keep correcting people when they're sick. So that was an interesting point in the movie. I thought that the effects, amazing. 1000 chef kisses, so good, so beautiful. The, the blood looks amazing. The amount of blood in this movie is astounding. It makes me so happy. There's so much of it. There's a part where it's raining blood and all I can think about is Slayer and that makes me very happy. Side like, the, the main character's name is Mia. My beautiful baby cat's name is Mia. So... Originally, when we saw this movie in the theaters, it was literally just me and the groom in the theaters. So every time they said Mia, I would scream Mia in a very high-pitched voice that I used to summon her throughout the house. So, like, that's going to be a bonus like to me because that's me. I love cats. I love my cat. I thought that the acting was very good. I really, really liked how everyone reacted to things. It wasn't, you know, necessarily over the top for the kind of predic predicament they were in. It was, that's how you would react. You'd probably freak out and lose your mind. Maybe cut your face open. Who knows? There, uh, there's a scene with someone stabbing someone else with a hypodermic needle and it gets them like under here, like actually goes in and my body shriveled up inside itself. Because that, like, anything I related, guys, if you're not new here, you know all the eye trauma I've suffered. I have a uh, horrible progressive eye disease, and I have had needles in my eyes several times. So, um, I feel, I feel that on a, a deep, deep, horrible, dark level, 
and just any oh and that's what this movie was supposed to do it was supposed to invoke that raw emotion from you and it totally did um i'm trying to think of dislikes what really did i dislike about this movie uh i thought the pacing was good i just some of it maybe didn't need to be in there, particularly a horrible scene involving their family dog, Grandpa, which, like, that's the cutest name for a dog I've ever heard. Uh, there is some horrible animal part in here, and if you're sensitive to that, they don't really show anything, but they allude to it, and your imagination just kind of runs wild, and, um, ouch. Ouch in my feelings. That made me sad. Um... I mean, I can't think of any other dislikes. I'd probably rate this movie like a 4.5 out of 5. I really, really enjoy this movie. I own this movie on Blu-ray. Um, I love re-watching this movie. This is, there's not many remakes I truly enjoy, and this has to be my number one. So, not that this is a video series about remakes, but... I had to put that out there. Um, have you seen this movie? What are your thoughts? Do you prefer the original Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, Army of Darkness, the series, Ash vs. Evil Dead? Let me know down below. Um, I think I still have one more season to get through of Ash vs. Evil Dead, but I really, really liked that. I think sequel-wise, Evil Dead 2 has to be my favorite sequel because it's like the first one, just 2.0. Just it's a little bit better, a little bit sillier, and I need some silliness. This movie does not have any silliness. And I think that's why it's such an effective horror movie, because there's just no relief. There's no like, ha ha ha, and then you get scared again. It's just you're typically on the edge of your seat for the whole time, just cringing, waiting for horrible things to happen to people's eyes. But... If you have not yet, please do subscribe to the channel. I'd love to have you. Don't forget to like the video if you did like the video, or you could like the video if you like things when they're named after your pets. You can hit the bell for all notifications of further uploads and live streams. Um, you can find me on Facebook at Reanimator Reviews, Twitter and Instagram at Reanimator. And please don't forget to check out the Farsighted Network. They put our reviews, my solo ones, as well as the ones with the groom in podcast form on iTunes. And please check out all of their creators' submissions as well. And I hope that maybe they have a little more insight than I do. I'm not, you know, not coming from a filmmaker point of view here. Just things I dig. But I'll see you later, guys. Bye.